I just go make me cry. <laughs> Good man. Seriously. So, Marco, you and I got connected just because I was following you on Twitter. You following me. We got connected. We got naked on Twitter. We yeah. got naked. Well, that's part of your brand, and we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, what I, I, I want you, wanted you here, and I told you why I wanted you here. Yesterday we did a, a television episode together. But I wanted you here on this stage to sh because I think you're doing what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and so when I saw what you were doing, I thought, wow, we got to talk to this guy. And then, of course, yeah. we hit it off and started speaking that language. So, yeah. but in essence, you, you've taken you, yeah. right? And now you've built it into a multi, multi million dollar brand. Yeah. And, and soon to be, I would think, uh, with what you're doing with the naked exchange, uh, exchange on the ICO stuff, blockchain, yeah. that you're going to take it to hundreds of millions. Yeah. And hopefully you'll hit the big B. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, my, my best hope for you. But you've taken and you've developed the brand. So tell me how much of, so let's tell everybody what you got. You got, you got the TV show. Yeah. You were property, multi-million dollar property yeah. uh, and so forth. And yeah. then you used the TV show. Then you got restaurants in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, you've got, uh, now you've started the blockchain stuff. Yeah, crypto. With, yeah. Good thing. You've got naked uh, cosmetics. Yes. What else? Travel, naked travel. Naked travel. Yeah. Right. And naked is what? Naked is just raw. Right? It's open. Yeah, it's, it's transparency. Not like, it's not like we're going on you know, travel and we're naked, right? No, it's so. just transparency in terms of you can be yourself, you can use the products. You, the products are really cool as well in, yeah. in terms of it. It didn't just say, the right. The restaurant's cool. They're yeah, cool. it's not about the name so much, it's what the product comes out of it, right. what the service comes so out the, of it. So it's, it's in essence, that's the brand. Yes, I mean, that's, the, that's brand. the brand. Yeah, well, why did you choose that as opposed to, oh, by the way, you're also a knight. Yes. Yeah, I should say Sir, Sir Marco. Right? Do I have to do something like <laughs> you don't? You can. I, you have I'm to kneel. You're supposed to kneel ass. down. Yeah, we've Jeff, become very good friends, as you can imagine, just <laughs> in a very short period of time. Because again, that language of that. So. So I was night. Yeah, I was given an honor in Malaysia because they have a half a million blind people in Malaysia, but they don't allow guide dogs in public. <laughs> That's right. You told me this. Right. So if you're blind, you're kind of limited what you can do. Right. So I did a film called, oh, well, and yeah. And, and why don't they have dogs and Muslims, right? Well, the, yeah, the, it's, a Muslim, a it's a Muslim country. So they've got this thing about dogs are dirty, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these blind people and, you know, I met some people that, that were blind and I heard the story and it's like, it really got to me. It really got to me because I saw the suffering there. So I thought, what the hell? I'm going to change this. So I went to China. I, Bought a guide dog, it cost me $15,000 to bring the guide dog into Malaysia. Brought the guide dog, gave it to a blind man. And guide dogs are really intelligent creatures. I mean, they, they can hold the bladder for six hours, they're really well trained. And then we did a film, I did a film called Are You Blind? You can actually watch it on YouTube, it got 15 million views in a week. And I filmed um, this man with a blind dog trying to go into public places. So I filmed him going to a shopping mall, for example and the security wouldn't let the dog and him in the mall. But we had it on camera. Yeah. And eventually they called the police, said, no, you can't bring the dog. And it all became exposed. And then we put this film out, it's a 12-minute film, and it embarrassed the whole infrastructure of Malaysia. So much so, the king and queen of Malaysia called me on the phone a week after the film comes you, out. I'm, I, get in this, I know we're going to talk about brand yeah. stuff, but weren't you worried about... I was like, oh shit, I'm going to get excommunicated, yeah, something's going to go, out, yeah. They kick you out. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they do have a sedition out there. Yeah. Right, it's pretty, yeah. you know, it's pretty, pretty freaky. So I'm going, oh shit, what have I done now? So I've gone too far. I thought I'd gone too far, right? And they How say, often do you really think that? Uh, all the time. Anyway, <laughs> um, so <laughs> I thought, okay, come on, give it to me. At least the king and queen are calling me, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So they called me and said, Marco, I just want to say that you've really embarrassed us. That was the first line. Was it really the king? Yeah. It wasn't like some, like, flat out. No, it was really the king. And then the prime minister called me after that, right? You've really embarrassed us because you've, you've, brought, you've brought a, a, a kind of subject to, to, our, to make it aware to us of what's going on. We didn't have no idea that guide dogs were really well trained. They could really help the blind out of situations. We had no idea there was this many blind people in the country. And we want to say thank you for doing that. Mm. And then all the shopping mall um, general managers telephoned me and apologized for their behavior to the blind people because they, it was prejudice, massive prejudice. Yeah. So that was fantastic because that was like my first big deal in terms of philanthropy. Did, did yeah. you, so I'm curious, did you do that and pick that out because you were writing a wrong or did you also do it because you could get some great publicity from it? 
for me, it's all about, if I'm going to do something, guys, you live once, right? I'm 50 years old last week. I know I look 30. You don't have to say it. That's okay with me, right? And when you get... Modest. Yeah, why not? Yeah, well. So if you're going to do something, my, my thinking is, if you're going to do something, you're going to put your time and your effort in something, go big or fucking go home, yeah. right? right. What's zero. the point? Yeah. No, you know? seriously, I mean, add zeros because you can, you've got the ability to do it. So you, I, I, I want to also point out something to show a little clip real quick, too. But you've got, you, you wanted to do a movie all your life, right? It, Since I was, well, actually, I ran, my, I ran away from home the first time when I was two years old, right? No, this is true. True story. Now, I, didn't, I was not aware of that until my mum told me. I had a plastic duck and the head went up and down like this, right? And I got five miles on this plastic duck. Plastic they had to help find me. me. A plastic dog. It was a plastic duck yeah. with had duck, wheels. Duck. A duck. Oh, see, I didn't so it was in the shape of a duck. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean a doll. <laughs> I don't mean a doll, Jeff. Yeah, Let's not go duck. down that road, right? Duck, yeah. It's a plastic duck with these wheels on it, and it was like yeah. two, and I was I was, I was just gone. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah, I was gone. So. So, so you ran away. What does that got to do with the movie? Um, well, you said it, I'd been thinking about it all my childhood, oh. and I had. Yeah. So I loved films from I, what I can remember, and I'd, I'd always wanted to be in a movie. I'd always wanted to create a movie, and that was since I was like two years old, three years old. Yeah. So that was a dream, yeah. All right. So what, let's play the clip because you just you just made a movie and you're starring in it. Yeah. And, and I joke that I've got a cameo. We'll see if they pick it up. You can be Jeff. We yeah, can we can organize that. that. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Play the play the play the clip. Ten years ago, a fatal misjudgment made me resign MI6. Now I'm on my last legs, bouncing in a cheap nightclub. The Russian Secret Service is looking for Sasha, a Ukrainian journalist who knows too much to be left alive. In order to force me to kill the woman that I love, they took my daughter. I am the last living member of Grupa Alpha, Russian Secret Service, FSB. Other have been executed. Now I have 24 hours to finish what started 10 years ago. We were cut the task of carrying out nation of on 12 journalists everybody is after the truth some to destroy it I decided not to take the truth to my grave I'm some to make it public. First time this has been seen too, so thank you for letting us see it. Um, First time, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I like about it, it fits into the brand, right? It's cutting edge, tough, uh, naked, openness, yes. all yes. this kind of stuff. So, so, but, so, how did you decide that that was the brand? Did, 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 it, did you think of it ahead of time, or did you come to it? What was it? You know, it's it's kind of a it's always the thing about people's lives is the stories, yeah. right? The story creates the purpose. But a lot of people don't get that until they're on the deathbed and they still don't get it, right? So for me, I knew I was different because of what I'd been through and the things I was doing as a kid, right? I hated school. Even when I went to school, I, I kind of left. Um, I can't a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. There's, there's little traits that I'm yeah. watching. You know, somebody earlier said, how do you be fascinating? I said, be fascinating. 
right? Yeah. I mean, that's what you, I mean, you're, yeah. just, that, you're living that, right? Yeah. And so how are you, so you're, and then you're monetizing all this stuff. So you're building this community, how are you monetizing it? So talk about the, the newest thing, because I think that's the way you're monetizing. This is the real money, right? Yes. The real money. This yeah. is the show, you're not making any money off the TV show, right? No, I had to give away the rights to that show. Yeah. And they've sold that show to 12 countries. And you're not making any money off it. And, I, and I had to give three houses of my own. Yeah. So it to the TV money. station. Okay, got so it. So it cost me about half a million pounds but to do did, that. But did that help elevate it? The PR from that TV show, huge. I can tell you, yeah. there's no word to describe right. how huge that was. Right. Because when I go to events now, and when I, when I play that video, if I'm going to speak at a keynote, you, you do hundreds like me a year, yeah. right? The first thing I do is play that TV show. Sure. Then what happens, excuse my language, everybody shuts the fuck up. Yeah. Because I'm kind of new, I've got a different accent, this thing, oh, this guy's, you know, he's, he's, he's going to come here and try and be clever and that oh, kind that of stuff. Sets, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that creates a level playing field, yeah. right? And that's really cool. But, you know, that took me 50 years to get that show on air. That's what people don't realize. That, that's exactly right. Everyone thinks, yeah. I, all these people come to me all the time and, and they say, yeah, I've got the show, I'm talking to these guys, I'm talking to these guys, go, good luck. Yeah. Because some 23-year-old, 25-year-old is going to be making a decision on the show. And trust me, I had the freaking money. I had the yes. money. I raised the two and a yep. half million dollars, put the show on air, yep. and it took me three years to get somebody to give me the, give me the slot. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I know what it's like. Yeah, it's not an easy yeah. thing to do. It's, it's hugely, yeah. and hugely then, and hard. Then the president of the network changes jobs that night, shows I'm never going to see it again. So let me tell you a true story about this, because this is really fascinating for everybody out there that thinks all is lost, you're not going to succeed, blah, 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 right. right? Before that TV show was aired, Something was happening, I was in a litigation case against, against a property developer. I bought this property, all checked out, blah, blah, blah. And then it, we, we kind of got the building, and then when we got the building, the tiles from the wall fell off the building. It was 50 apartments that I bought. And I bought the fire brigade in, and they said, I'm really sorry, but those fire tiles are not standard. We're going to have to condemn the building. Now, you, has anyone heard of Grenfell? So in England, there was a, a big tower block in London that burnt down because oh, yeah, right. of exactly the same issue, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So this was before Grenfell, yeah. right? So I had to sue the developer. I won the case, by the way. I've not got paid it because the developer went bust. Okay. So then I've got to sue the building warranty insurers. I've got to sue the, the lawyers that closed the deal for me. Then I've got to sue the ba I'm actually suing a bank. Is there anyone in the building? No, there was, I wouldn't put anyone in the building. Mm -hmm. I would rather go through the pain financially and not put anyone there to protect people's lives first, mm -hmm. and secondly, my reputation, because reputation's everything, right? So the bank called Channel 4 TV and said, you can't play that TV show because we're in a dispute with Marco Robinson. So I'm like, fuck you fucking bastards, right? Yeah, right. And I'm, oh, I was like, I was in rage, I was in rage. Did it, did it slow it down? It slowed it down for two days because Channel 4 basically grilled me yeah, well and they said, they've got to figure it out, they no, got they figure got it out because it's, the, it's, a, it's actually a government-owned public TV yeah. station, yeah, right? Sure, yeah. So they did their due diligence, they, they researched it, and my lawyer called them and said, you know what, Marco, we're going to bring the show forward and we're going to broadcast it earlier than we were originally because of these bastards, what they did to you, oh, that's cool. right? And then Grenfell happened, which, I mean, it's, that's a terrible tragedy. Right. But that really showcased that I made the right decision, okay. you know? So that was fabulous. So fast forward, we, got, we just have a few more minutes, and then, and then I, I really want to yes. let people ask questions. But, so now, now you're doing the, the ICO. Yes. Okay, how much are you going to raise? So Naked Exchange, it's about 100 mil valuation right now, right? So I'm doing a private sale on equity for this, and I'm inviting investors if you're interested, guys, talk to us. I'm inviting Jeff as the number one person in America. Now, this is, this is true, Jeff, because... Right. Well, you, yeah, well, you said you were going to talk to me. Yeah, there is something I want to say to everybody in this room about this, this guy here. I think this guy is a fantastic guy, right? Because he's got a business involving his whole family. It's well organized. It's, what, it's actually one of my favorite events I've ever been to. Thank you very much. Right? And you speak... Let's give him a round of applause, please, for that, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. So for me, it's like we get on really well because we do the same thing. We, we speak at 100 keynotes, we're on a plane all the time. We know what it's like, yeah. right? So that's what we've got. We've got a massive connection there. And to be honest with you, I made a decision yesterday 
to move to America because of you. Oh, really? Yes. When it comes to South Dakota? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. No, I'm moving to Los Angeles. Oh, that's pretty cool. In January, so, but, yeah. So it, with, uh, this is really cool. Though, because I, I, I want him to tell you the number. And here's why. Because it's through the stuff that I'm doing as a consultant in the, in the building of the brand. Um, I don't know, Ty, is Tyler in the room? Uh, yeah, Ty, how many boards am I on now? 17. 17. <laughs> so I'm on 17 boards. Now, Tyler manages all that. You know, Tyler came to me the other day. He says, Dad, i got to talk to you about some news. I said, what? I says, I says is it what? Is it somebody bitching, moaning, and complaining? Is it a problem? What is it? You know, that's the first thing I was thinking. It was one of those kind of days. He goes, "Well, our holdings in this one company. I don't know if it's going to be nine million or fifty-four million. All because of my thought leadership and the stuff that we're doing. And you have those things coming to you all the time about building that that brand up and how you do it. And, and it comes from a, 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 a basis, right? It comes from rock bottom. Yeah. Because rock bottom is the best foundation." And it creates more champions than privilege ever could or did, about right? Questions. Do you guys have questions yeah. about how he's doing it, the way he's doing it, or the way it's being done? About I can't, I can't emphasize how much it is important with the things that Google's about to make some major changes. That's going to eliminate your email its effectiveness. It's out. It's done. That if you don't have engagement with the audience, they won't send the email through. Yeah. They're, they're putting that in place. That if you don't have regular engagement with the people that you already send the emails to, and they open it and look at it, they won't send them through. That's coming. All right? So if you don't start looking for the podcast, the, the television, the Twitter base, the, the Facebook base, and if you don't build those in aggregate, and you got to go where they're at, and if you don't start building that engagement with people, you're literally going to, it's going to be the haves and have nots. I will tell you that. Absolutely. It's yeah. coming. It's coming. And so, but I'm, but I'm trying to show you that there's, there's guys like this that are just crushing it and rocking it by building these communities and building these brands and then monetizing the living Dickens. But well, you know what it really is, the bottom line? It's having the balls to be yourself. Yeah. It's having the balls to say, right, this is me. This is who I am. Take me or leave me, or I don't really give but a you shit, can do you know? in different ways. I mean, yeah. what I think is really cool about you, and I, don't, you know, I wouldn't do, like, C-suite makeup, right? Yeah. But I do have a license for C-suite cologne, smell of Well, success. there you go. That's perfect. Yeah. That's right. a perfect marriage. Right. I'm not yeah. joking. I've been I'm not, for it. I, I love the idea. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah. so the, I have a, a, I've, I've, I've got the, or the, the, the markups for yeah. all the clothing, yeah. C-suite suits, exactly. C-suite ties, C-suite shirts. So that's what I was going to say to you, so, fashion, everything like that's connected. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and there's other things I found, like, you know, uh, I, you know, as I go through the process, like what we're doing with the Hero Club, some of you know we're doing the Hero Club. I wish I'd have found that six years ago. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about us. We beat ourselves up because we didn't think of it earlier. No, but right? what, a, what a great gift that it gives to me now that yeah. I can do with it. Any question? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Just, just stand up. I can do it. Chris. Hi, Chris. I can't, can't see you with the lights and stuff. That's okay. Um, Marco, can you talk about the ecosystem? Because a lot of times when we're entrepreneurs, we think a lot of ideas. Yes. And I get caught up in ideas. And then I'm doing all these things. But then what I learned yesterday about your Everything's connected. Yes. Can you talk about the connection so that you can demonstrate how... Well, let's, dis let's discuss what an ecosystem actually is. Yeah, sure. yeah so an, e an ecosystem is basically a place where you create a new economy and everything inside the ecosystem stays inside it, but the ecosystem grows because the people inside the ecosystem get more value by staying in the ecosystem with you other than going somewhere else, right? So what I do is I create businesses that are going to add more value in that ecosystem. Because if I've got a customer, I know they're going to travel three times a year. You just described the C-Suite network. There you go, exactly. exactly. I mean, I didn't ask you to do that. I mean, you just described That's exactly your business model, exactly ecosystem, right. simple. By the way, and the more I help you, I gain too, right? Yes. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's the real... And the, part. the clever part is really understanding the trends understanding the trend of what people are doing with the money, especially consumers, and actually, you know, how they want to spend it. And the, the blockchain for me was, it's really a great thing that, you know, it's one of the, I mean, Bitcoin was one of the best inventions ever created, right? But the blockchain behind it is total genius. It's even bigger, 
But it's so, because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. You know, people get ripped off so much these days. I mean, you know, you, you guys are CEOs, you're business people. Every day you get suppliers rip you off, right? You pay a consultant, they don't do the job. You pay for a service, you don't get it done. Am I right or not? Yeah. Right? And I know you've paid hundreds, thousands of millions of dollars on wasted shit that you, that you really, that could have actually closed you down. But imagine having a blockchain system where you could actually track the person's track record 100% accurately. And you could track their, what they're doing for you 100% accurately. That blockchain is immensely powerful. Well, so that drives it. Anybody else? I mean, well, I want to make sure you've got time. You've got, we're, we're over here, right? And then, right, we've got two. I, I know I'm going over. They're talking to me in my ear. Go ahead. Right here. And then right over here. Make sure. We talked a little bit yesterday, Marco, but could you kind of tell us, like, how you got started? I kind of know a little bit of your story, but how you actually got started from where you were to... I kind of like, I kind of told this story yesterday. A lot of people weren't here yesterday. So my mum left my dad when I was two years old. He was a gambler, he spent all the money. She had to leave him. She had no money whatsoever. She had to go to live with her mum. Her stepfather sexually abused her. She had to leave there. I was two years old. We slept in the park. It was minus five degrees, right? Can you imagine this? So, and then for 10 years, we were living in people's houses. She was move, moving around the country, looking after me, doing cleaning jobs, any jobs she could get. She wasn't educated. And so I saw firsthand the suffering that she went through to look after me. And when I had the conscious and awareness, it's like, that's not even a word, but I just made it up. Um, when I saw that happening in front of me, I realized, holy shit, man, the most important person in your life is your mum. So what I did, I think, right, how can I, how can I look after my mum? because he's been through an immense amount of shit, you can imagine. So that really drove me, right? That, that gave me so much drive to really get out there and make money. And you know what? It wasn't easy for me to make money because I didn't go to school. I absolutely detested school, right? So I had to learn by experience. And I'll tell you a good story. This is a really good story. In 21, um, I got into direct sales, selling timeshare, in Manchester, and the, the property was in Spain, right? And I didn't sell anything for four weeks. I was the worst salesperson you could ever imagine, right? They were going to fire me. That was what it was going to be like. And I had no money. I had to walk five miles every day to get to work and back, and the food in the cabinet was running out, okay? And I didn't want to go back home because there was nothing there for me except, well, nothing. So it was like the question at first that I had was, because my mind was not as strong as it is now, the, question, the, the kind of debate I had was, oh, I'm not really cut out to be a salesperson. Maybe I should go and do like a cleaning job or something like that, right? But then when I got more desperate, I thought, hang on a minute. I looked and focused at my past and said, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through that, what my mum did. Fucking, how can I be successful? And I kept asking that question, walking every day for a week. I knew I was going to get fired in seven days. So I kept asking that question every single day, all the time. And the top salesperson gave me a book. He took me to one side and said, listen, Marco, you don't see it yet, but you know what? There's an immense power in you. You don't even see it. I want, I want you to read this book that I read. It made me the top salesperson in the company. So he gave me this book. And he said to me, go now home and read it. So I went home and read it. And he said, when you read it, read it again. And I read it eight times in one night. It's the first book I ever read. And I, I didn't go to sleep. And I was in the morning, I was so en energized. It was like electricity running through me. I was like, Ugh! I couldn't wait to see my client. I couldn't wait to see them. So I ran to the office. And by the time I got there in my suit, I was too sweaty. So they sent me back to change. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I, I, eventually I got back, but I got a lift because of, no, oh, no, no, we'll give you a lift because you're looking really good today. So I, that was a kind of shift, right? So anyway, I got back and my first clients, and this is where the blind dog thing comes in, my first clients were blind. So I had this blind couple and I brought them to sit, next, to sit down to me and thought, fuck, how, how, how the hell am I going to sell a holiday to them? They can't even see it. I'm like, oh my God, this is a challenge. But I thought I was in such a place where I had nothing to lose. I had no money, no food, nothing. I said, right guys, I don't care if you're blind or not. You're going to sit there for five hours you're going to listen to me, you're going to buy timeshare, and you're going to spend $10,000 and get your credit card out and give it to me in five hours' time. That's what I said to them, because I didn't give a shit. 
And they said, no, we're not. We're not, we're not. And they argued with me for five hours. After five hours, he got his gold credit card out and passed it over to me. And I'm like in shock because this has never, ever happened to me before. I'd actually convinced someone to believe in me. And I said to them, after the shock, why did you buy from me? It's like the worst question you can ask if you're a salesperson, right? <laughs> can you, you know, can you, why did you buy from me? And they said, what, you mean we didn't have any sales before us? I said, no, you're the first. <laughs> and they said, you what, really? I said, yes. And we just broke down laughing for about half an hour. Literally tears. And what he said was, and his wife said, and they're amazing people. They said, what, the reason we bought from you, even though we couldn't see you, is we could feel that your belief in what you were doing was undeniable. And once you believed it, we fucking believed it. Right? And that was the most amazing thing that happened to me. Yeah. One last question right here. And then, then, then we're gonna go. What was the name of the book you wrote? Oh, yeah. We, you I knew, to, I always get that question, right? Yeah, yeah. You got, you got to listen to my podcast. Okay. Yeah. No, what is it? Uh, it's called, um, well, I've, I actually wrote two books myself, right? But this book was called Bring Out the Magic in Your Mind. And it was written in the 1950s by an English magician. Ooh. It's an incredible book, right? But de it was the, wasn't really the book, it was the book at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. It was the right message at the right time. Yeah. So we come back to desperation inspiration. There's only two things that get you to change and reinvent yourself in life. You're either desperate or you're inspired, mm. right? What you guys have got to learn is Desperation is a great anchor, but inspiration lasts a lifetime. And that's why, for me, philanthropy became a life and inspiration. So right now, my philanthropy is the top of the thing. It's my purpose. My purpose, is to, my purpose as an individual is to be a bright, magnificent, shining light, do wonderful things for myself, and do wonderful things for other people. That's my purpose. Fantastic. Right? Fantastic. One more. Last question. Um, Margaret, you briefly spoke about belief. Yes. Well, that comes down to belief. So when I was 21, I had that pivotal moment with the, the blind couple. That, was, that gave me a belief system. It gave me a belief system. So after that, I had belief in myself. And because of what I'd been through as a kid, see, as a child, because I was an only child, because of the suffering, to escape the pain, what I would do is I would live in my imagination. I would live there. I know that sounds a bit weird, but we're, we're, we're human beings, guys. We're not robots. We have to go somewhere, right? You have to have creative space to think, what the fuck am I going to write about? What, when it, what's the next chapter, you know? And this comes down to vision. So your belief system gives you your vision to see the future that no one else can see apart from you because you've seen it in your imagination actually take place. You've seen the outcome and you've seen the ending like a movie. Right? That's how you create an idea into a business. Now, I'll tell you another story because we're going over time, but it's really an important story to tell you. In 2008, I divorced my wife. I was 40 years old. It was the best day of my life, by the way. Um, she and, says the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I had no money. This is 10 years ago. I had no money. I was paying excessive school fees. It was crazy. I had three jobs. I was working 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in one job in a call center at night as well as another job in the daytime to pay the bills. And I thought, shit, how, how can I, I'm really sick and tired of this. I want to be a millionaire. You know, I've got to a level, but I got to a plateau. So what can I do? I said, okay, I'm going to do this. So I had an idea to create a vacation incentive company where I'd get spare hotel rooms because of all my connections in timeshare. I rang the hotel. If you've got a spare room, you can give me for free. Most of them said no. Some of them said yes. Right? And I put those rooms into a voucher. I've got, I've got this here right now, right? I put a free holiday in a voucher and I sold a thousand of these vacations to Citibank. So if you subscribe to their credit card, you get a free holiday and I would supply the holiday. And I put the Citibank branding on it and that kind of stuff. In that year, I had no money and made $12 million with that idea. Right? And then I duplicated it and made it into like a, a network marketing opportunity. So I signed up about 5,000 agents to sell the vouchers for me and I sold to all the big companies. Now I'm bringing this business to America, by the way, big time, right? That's another private we're gonna, sale. Yeah, we're gonna need some. Yeah, some so things. in here, for example, there is um, 
it's all branded and stuff like that, and I can white label it to your business, right? So, for example, um, I don't know what products you have. For imagine, let's imagine you've got a, an app that you, uh, there, some a lady was talking about it this morning. I think it was Madeline. What was the app called that you loved? That you're actually transcribing your voice, your phone oh, call? Yeah, voice era. Voice era, it's out there. Voice era, right? So you buy, you subscribe to my app and you use our product once and I'll give you a free holiday to Europe for six days, seven nights. Would that add value to your products or service? Yeah, so a vacation is the highest perceived value item you can actually give someone because when they, when they go, free vacation, wow, right? And that makes people, you know, take action. It's a great call to action. So I made a shitload of money doing that and I still do. Awesome. Yeah, but the thing about behind that is, is that I was prepared to take the risk. And this is the message I need to give all of you today. The Dalai Lama, my favorite quote of all time, right, is what the Dalai Lama says. And the Dalai Lama says, take into account great achievements and great love requires you to take great risk. And if you're not prepared to take the risk, fuck you, you don't deserve it. <laughs> now you see why we need ratings. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, my takeaway is an idea without implementation yes. is just air. Yes. And, and I think that's my biggest one. Give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let you go up that way. Okay.